Hey everyone, it's Lincoln here with another episode of Tokens and Heft, and today we're taking a look at Rampage! The game of giant monsters destroying buildings and eating people, and occasionally beating each other up. And while it's not in any way officially affiliated with the old Nintendo game Rampage, that's more or less what they were going for with this. So, that's the. let's take the box out. You can see the board. How nice is that? Uh, let's go over the box real quick. It's not a whole lot. Each side, each three of the sides at least have the Rampage name, and then one of them has a nice big green face. The other side has a... has the red monster. The monsters don't have names, they just have colors. Back of the box, showing off the game. What you get with it. There's the red monster again. Made by Repos Productions. And this is going to be a little different than usual. Normally I like to open the box, set up, and then show you how to play. With this game it's a little easier if I show you how to play and then describe the setup. Just because some of the, or at least some of the things I want to get into are all under things and I can't reach them yet. Not until you play it, not until the game gets a little further in. Uh, what to say about Rampage? Just look at this. Tons and tons of meeples. Just all over the place. Hidden inside the buildings. Got them at the stadium. There's a little, uh... Can't blanking on what to call it. I want to say a tank, but that's not right. Uh, like a Hummer. Just look at that. This wonderful 3D board. Rampage is a game that definitely gets, uh, if you're playing it uh, anywhere public, if you're at like a party playing this, which seems like it might be a little tricky, or you know, you say you're out at your friendly local game store having a, having fun with this. This is a game that gets people to come over, you know, if you're at a convention, this draws people to the table. It's got such a great look to it. And what is this game about? Well, I said it's smashing buildings and destroying and eating people. How do you go about that? It's pretty simple. On your turn, you can perform two actions. There are four actions available to you. Actually, let me grab the uh, rule book and I can show you. We've all got a nice little icon and everything. You can move. To move your monster, first I will point out that each monster is made up of, technically, of two parts. There is your actual monster. It's nice wooden pieces. Not too heavy, but they're, they have good feel to them and they get the job done. Uh, you'll have to sticker them up before you start, but it's not that big a deal. They're nice stickers. The art in the whole game is pretty great. Uh, but every monster is made up of their actual monster figure and then this little guy that me, uh, represents their feet. The feet are how you move. So let's say I started down here. Uh, there are little circles in the corners that are the starting positions. Let's put them there, put that there. So to move, all you would do is pick up your monster and flick the disc. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't the best move for me, but it's not too bad. I'll explain that in a second, because the next thing uh, I'll go over, that's all your movement. That's one of your two actions. That's how that works. Real quick, we'll come back out, and we'll take a look at the next action. It's also pretty common. Demolish. To demolish a building, or at least to attempt something, first I'm going to fudge that move a little bit because your feet have to be touching the sidewalk surrounding the building you're trying to demolish. So I was just a little bit off. If I had been in that far, that's touching. You know, all the way in is a little preferred, but 
there you go. So if, you're touch, if your feet are touching a building or a, the sidewalk around a building, you can then try and demolish it. Now, it's a little tricky to film. The way the rule, the rules state it that you have to, you have to do this entirely while seated. I have yet to play this game in a seated around a table environment, or at least one where it's, a, it's more like a dinner dinner table or something like that. It's always been a coffee table, so it's lower than all of us, or one side of the table is lined up with a couch, so that changes things a little bit. But we generally go with about a foot above the, uh, the table, with your arm parallel. And then to demolish a building, you just drop your guy on it. Now, before I go over the next two actions, this is a good point to go over the other, the rest of the turn. So, you do two actions. In this case, I moved and then I demolished. Then there's collateral damage. Collateral damage is if my guy, say I moved and I had gone off the board for any reason, then I would lose a tooth. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, first off, this piece of the building no longer had anything on top of it, and it was knocked off. So if it's knocked off and there's nothing on top of it, you get to keep that. That goes in your monster's stomach, which is behind their player shield. Uh, and that's all we have to do at this point. Actually, ah, uh, no, yeah, it is. I, normally, the, the last part of your turn is chow down. If there are meeples in your neighborhood, and you can see we've got these clear walls delineating the difference between the neighborhoods, as well as they tend to have alternating colors, more or less. Uh, so if there are any meeples in my area, or in my neighborhood, I could eat them. Up to a maximum of the number of teeth you have. I currently have six. There are two printed up here, and then these down here are all tokens. The four down here. Uh, and I should note that um, whenever you eat things, and that includes the building tiles that you get, you you throw them behind the player shield, and that's just referred to being a, being in your stomach. Player shields uh, are nice. All four of them, for each of the different colored monsters, has something going on. Green's got the crazy eyes. Uh, they all have the same reminder of how the game works on your on the back. Now, you can do two actions. Here are the four actions. Then you do collateral damage. Then you chow down. Pretty simple game. So anyway, that was a normal one. Let's see what the other two actions are. The other two available actions are your breath weapon, which is kind of weird, but interesting, and it's a lot of fun at the table. <clears throat> to do the breath weapon, uh, I suggest holding the figure still, your monster still. You then place your chin on top of the monster's head, inhale, and then blow out, trying to blow as much, as many meeples over and about as you can. Thusly. That was terrible because I was at a bad position. But if I were more like over here... <sighs> wow, I moved a building but didn't knock anything over. But that's the kind of thing that can happen. And thankfully, it shows off something that we do have to go over. See how this little guy down here fell off the board? Poor little meeple. That means he gets sent to the runaway board, over in this corner. I'm not actually going to do the whole thing over there. So you would place this on the board. It would be on a flat surface so it wouldn't just fall off, so I'm not going to hold it there. Every time, a every time meeples are blown off the board, with one or two exceptions because of powers, uh, they get put on this board. The character who fills up a row has to deal with the consequences. Uh, rows two and four are you lose a tooth if you're the one who screwed up and then everyone besides you gets to 
take an extra action. Oh no, that's rows one and three. One, one and four. God, I'm really off this morning. Two and five are both, you lose a tooth and then everyone besides you gets an action. Oh, that's right, I, that's what I just said. Screwed it up. This means, every, this means the next person in turn order gets to move you to any neighborhood. That means you lose a tooth, everyone gets an action. Row three is awful, you just lose two teeth, and if we fill up row six, we lose. Well, you don't lose, but the game is over and the score is tallied. It's not cooperative, this is most certainly a competitive game. Which brings me to our last thing. Let's put the pink dinosaur over there so I have something a little more fun. The last action, there's the breath weapon I just described and the icon for it. The last action, at least the one I like to save for last, is tossing a vehicle. You'll see on the board there's a handful of vehicles. Like right here we can see the little uh, armored Humvee. Over here is the news van and then there's also a fire truck. And you can kind of see the ice cream truck right there behind Pink's face. I'll just wildly zoom for a while. That's fun, right guys? Alright, so first off, to throw a vehicle, you have to be in the same neighborhood. So we're going to fudge things and move him over here. And then we will take this vehicle. Uh, putting it on its side is advised. I suppose you could put it along the flat edge up top, or I mean, the bottom it's going to get weird. But all of them, actually no, they all have a universal shape. So yeah, all of them, you know, you can put them upside down and on the side is the best. At least in my opinion, it seems to work the best. So you hold a little guy, you are allowed to like tilt it around a little bit. You hold the guy, and then... Ah! I missed pink. You throw a... The vehicle throwing gets is usually aimed at one of your friends playing. Uh, it helps, and it's good for knocking guys around in certain instances, but for the most part, uh, I usually see the vehicle tossing being used to attack each other. Now, if you hit someone, if you hit an opponent with a vehicle, for one, say I did, they stay lying down until the beginning of their next turn. Then they get to stand up, that doesn't cost any actions, it's for free, it's just to kind of help screw things up, because you can't, hold on a sec, I'm going to end up demolishing a building so you can see, or I can just kind of pick it all up. You see how she's laying there? That's going to screw with people's movement, the way meeples fall around, things of that nature. Uh, it's just going to screw things up a little bit. People will be bouncing off of her when they try and move. It'll be fun. And that is more or less how you play. You know, everyone has two actions a turn. Choose from those four. And you go. You destroy things, you eat meeples. You destroy things, you eat meeples. It doesn't sound... Well, it sounds fun. And that on itself is fun. But there's a little more than that. Because I wanted to talk to the talk, show you the game before I could show you the rest of the setup. Because it really, you really kind of need to see this for some of it, for it to make sense. And then also, um, it's easier for me to show some of it off after demolishing buildings as opposed to before. So the way the game starts is once everyone's selected a color they want to be and like an area they want to start in, everyone gets one character card, which they keep face up, one power card, which they keep face up, and then a secret superpower, which they keep face down. They flip up when they want to use it, and it is a and it's usually a one-time use thing. Nope, they all are. So let's have a quick look at this. The character cards are generally scoring bonuses. Like this guy, who's actually what I ended up playing with last time I played. He is mean. He is trying to get red meeples who are heroes. 
If he has the most red meeples at the end of the game, he gets an extra 10 points. Hold on a sec. Let me pull out some meeples. And we'll go over the types of guys. One, two, three, four. I think that's all of them. I believe I've got everyone. All right. So let's go over stuff. We've got green meeples are soldiers. Gray meeples are old people, or the elderly. Black meeples are businessmen. Blue meeples are reporters. Red meeples are heroes, which I love that halfway through the first game I figured it out. I'm like, oh, blue looks like... Blue is the colors that Clark Kent wears, and then we, he throws a little red in there, and we've got a hero. That's how I remember that. And then, of course, what game of Rampage, or what game like this would be complete without... Blondes! Yes, the yellow meeples are blondes. They even, they don't have the split for legs, so it's like they're wearing a skirt. And those are the six types of uh, citizens, or meeples, that you will be eating. So... Yeah, red, or mean wants to have the most red. There's tourist, scrap merchant, anarchist, punk, the pacifist who wants to eat the most soldiers, glutton, seer, seductive, softy, shy, destructive, young, brawler who gets points for, who gets extra points for other teeth. You already get points for teeth, that, other people's teeth that you've got at the end of the game, but this gives him a little more of a bonus. The Romantic is cute because the Romantic wants to get pairs of heroes and blondes. For each pair, they get extra points. The Imitator is interesting because the Imitator can just copy someone else's character card, I believe it is. The Power Cards are what you'd expect. They're special powers that you have. Climber. Oh, Climber is cool. A friend of mine used this in the last game. Uh, you get to, as your move, you can take your feet and put them on top of a building if it's in the same neighborhood as you, and then you can launch yourself off of there. Climber, jumper. Oh no, I dropped the vacuum. The vacuum's a cool one, because any meeples that go off the table in your neighborhood, that's the important thing we forgot the first time, you get to suck them up into your stomach. The retainer. Stretchy tongue. Star dancer. Stretchy paws, sharp canines, long tail, heavyweight, boxer, smelly paws. Oh, these are upside down. That's Hurricane. Hurricane's a fun one. Hurricane lets you do your breath weapon from on top of any guy. Not just your monster, but any monster on the board. Kung Fu I also really love because... In, you can do the throw vehicle action, only instead of throwing a vehicle, you put your feet on top of your head and flick them at someone. Telekinesis lets you pick up a building or a vehicle from any neighborhood to throw it. And then Siren, who I believe calls meeples in. That's a good variety, considering there's only four players at a time. I don't think I've seen the same ones twice in a game yet. And the powers are really fun, and... You forget that someone has them, and then, they'll, then they actually use a power like, Whoa, what the heck's going on? It's like, dude, don't you remember? I got stretchy paws. Like, wait, what just happened? Oh, it was my smelly feet. Sorry, man. And then these secret superpowers are... One-time use, discard when you use them, keep them hidden until you use them. Ah, man, this is... This was weird because it was just me and other guys, but my monster ended up having to kiss another one because I got two meeples out of it with the passionate kiss. Terminator, Tooth Protector, Paralyzing Gaze, Unleashed, which is cool, you just get two extra actions for that turn. Really Hungry, Catcher. I always can't see this, it's Ultra Bright Smile. And I love the art for this entire game. Visibility, Earthquake, the Small Wings, I love this guy. Who Got the Cheese, Too Cute, Unstable Mutation, Hobo, and Scavenger. And they... The art in this game is so great. Just the ideas for all the characters, for all the powers, everything. 
everything just works. It's fun, it's cute, uh, the monsters feel monstrous without feeling terrifying. So, you know, it's not like a game that... This is... If your kids are old enough to not swallow meeples, then I think they're ready for this game. There's nothing too scary or anything like that in it. And it's just so much fun. You're just knocking buildings over. It takes forever to knock this thing out. It's so low, and I'll show you. Most of the guys on their base, all the normal buildings have four uh, meeples holding them up. This stupid thing has six. One at each corner, and then one between each of those. <clears throat> that reminds me. Hold on one second. Much better. I need to go over the rest of setup. One of the things is, of course, the player shields. You see those four spots? Give everyone their four teeth tokens to put in those spots. Uh, the thing I really needed to uh, have a smash board for, that's, that was fun. That really was fun. But I wanted to show off not just the building pieces, but the actual bases themselves. There are several tiles. They come in the two sizes. There's the double wide and then the single tiles is what I think of them as. Because they are... Yeah, they are. Well, maybe slightly off, but what have you. Uh, but these are how you build the buildings. You'll see all the tiles, both the big and the small ones, have insides and outsides. There's... Three or four types of each. I don't know the, sp the specific breakdown, but there's a variety. So, I mean, here's a common thing you'll see. Here's two of the insides. This is an office. This is a movie theater. There's a completely different, like... Oh, no, that looks more like an apartment. Hmm, nice loft. There's one that looks very similar, but it's more of an office building. Uh, we have different roofs. Uh, there's another little nice place inside. The, there's nothing different for this. This is the stadium. It's always going to be the same. You'll notice that in the corners whoop, are these little icons for meeples. And that's just to show you how to set them up. And those icons are printed on the rubble on the base of the board. Whee. Might be kind of hard to make out. Ah, I've ruined the world. There's one of them. But yeah, on these rubble spaces. And you'll see that the rubble spaces are not flush with the board. Where's his feet? And that's so that even when there's nothing there, you still bounce off of them. And I think to give them a slightly better foundation. It's great. I've got a... Just as the table wobbles. I like that. Oh, that's going to fall any second now. That's nice. That would be really awesome in a real game to have this building just teetering like that. Someone's going to get a lot of points out of that. So back to these rubble spaces. One of the things you have to do before you start the game is these guys all have a sticky side to them on the back. So you have to you'll have to peel the, you know, the non-sticky paper. I don't know. There's probably an official term for it. But yeah, you stick the non you peel you peel the backing off. Backing, that's it. You peel the backing off. And you will actually have to sit these, all six of them, on the board. It's not that big a deal. And I was just, it was just something that surprised me. I'm like, oh, I have to do that? That's an interesting kind of assembly. And then once I got it done, I understood why, and it made perfect sense. Now, to make things a little trickier, the other uh, setup thing you have to do, and I'm going to have to move a lot of stuff out of the way for a second. Roar! This is a really fun game. And accidentally knocking stuff over is fun. Actually, in the real game, you don't want to accidentally knock anything over. If you do, you lose a tooth. So be wary of that. But the centerpiece is what really got me. Because the board is actually two halves that are held together by this interesting piece. You see this on the bottom? If you look at it, these three are all about the same size. This is the little one so that it only orients one way when it's placed in here. And to get this, and you'll see also that it's two layers, to get that, they have you take this piece, you, you stick the board together, you place the puzzle piece in with the other side up, 
and then that this too had sticky stuff on it. So it's you peel the backing off and then carefully line this up. I was a little nervous, but it worked out fine. It was no problem. It's just something interesting. It's a neat thing that I'd never had to do when assembling a game before. Another nice thing is the game comes with two clips just to help you level out the playing field, which is good because one of my halves, one of the larger buildings, uh, I think I, I pressed down or there was a little bit of warping or something, so it on its own kind of tilts up a little bit, kind of curls up on the sides. Not enough to really bother you just by looking at it, and it's really not that big a deal. But it does cause this to be a little uneven, so I'm really happy that they uh, gave me those clips. It helped screw up, or up, fix my tiny little error. I think I've been over everything. You move and smash and demolish and use your powers and throw trucks at your friends and eat a ton of people after knocking them out of demolished buildings. That's Rampage, man. And it doesn't, it takes a little bit to set up. You know, a lot of games I have are much faster to set up, but it's totally worth it. And when you play the game, you and everyone you play with is gonna have a good time. It doesn't take that long, it's super easy to understand, it looks great, it's tons of fun. So Rampage is a game that I highly recommend. Thanks for watching, this has been Lincoln with Tokens and Heft. Catch you guys next time.